Hello everyone, this is Pino Trogu again from San Francisco State University and this is the introduction to drawing for designers class and I'm going to be talking about once more the Q project and I'm going to try to give another overview that actually has more details about each individual part and um, hopefully that will help um, everyone so and today is March 31st 2021. And um, it's very likely that things will change slightly in the next semester. So um, always check with the current you know, assignment because some things in the video may be slightly different than um, the current version, okay? So uh, let's see, I'm just gonna go first through the uh, different, different drawings, different parts so that we have again, an overview. And so we started out, if you recall by, um, sectioning a cube um, with just one, a few lines, okay? And we had different grids. This was a four by four grid. This was a two by two grid. The two by two grid had a couple of variations. One had the uh, diagonals and the other ones uh, didn't. So in this first one through nine, if you just use those lines, um, technically you might not need to use the compass later to build your cube. Um, although, as, even though I thought that was a, a simpler version, there were a couple of cases that um, turned out to be unusual. And so I'll be talking about that as well. And this is just one example of one student that um, uh, did the sections. Uh, this is actually page two, ended up selecting this particular section. Uh, the rules here were that you were supposed to start in the, in the center of the left side and move to the right side and end anywhere on that right side. Uh, now, some sections are a little too complicated to fabricate, um, but most of these actually uh, do work, would, would work. Um, and then the same student had also set from the two by two grid. Um, again, in the one through nine, we saw that some designs basically repeat. Uh, these particular students managed to do all different ones. Um, yeah, so this is an example of a section that would have been hard to build. And the two parts, meaning the top part and the bottom part of the cube would have been hard to fit if you actually built it um, like this. Okay, so that was the first assignment. Um, then the second assignment was to, um, to take that initial section. And these were my examples. So these were not some that I asked you not to do these particular ones because um, these were just an example. So what we did was we took, and I'm gonna quickly take a piece of tracing paper. Let's see if I can manage. Okay. Well, it's good to have tracing paper around. Okay, this, this assignment has already been done, but um, but this is now mostly for future students. Um, so what we did was we took the initial section. Okay, this design, and we mirror it. And we made a specular image on the other side. Okay, so to do that, we would get this. Okay, and once we did that, that first pair, we took that whole pair and we rotated it by 180 around this point right here. Okay, so that was the final design. Um, and the advantage of this procedure is that um, you start in the beginning and you end in the beginning. So there is a continuous line um, that's going to go around your cube when you actually make your cube that's going to reconnect, okay? This was based on the two by two grid. Let's see. And then my other example on the uh, four by four grid was this one, okay? Um, yeah, so basically the same process. The benefit of 
to show this again. So the initial design was this one. Oh, and each, each um, spot on the grid as a layer, right? Which we saw earlier. Oh, it's lost, oh yeah, here it is, okay. Um, so that they repeat, but they're basically, let's see if I can show it bigger. Yeah, so the center is A, the middle sides are C, the corners are E's, and in between we have B's right there. And then the last one is gonna be X there. Okay. So it's this one. I'm gonna show it even though it's gonna be out of focus a little bit. Um, so that is gonna be helpful to keep track of things later on with the letters. So anyway, our design here was again, this was the initial design. We mirror it. And by mirror again means literally that if you put a mirror next to it, let's see if I can show it, yeah, a little bit, um, you would get that shape, right? So that's the mirror image of the image of the thing on the left, um, so that it would look like this. And then we took that entire thing, and again we rotate it with that pivot over there in that spot, okay. So this was drawing, I believe, number 17, although the drawing numbers may change in the future. Um, okay, put this away. Then the next one was a drawing that is a little bit abstract at first when you look at it, because it's like, what is this? Um, but really all that it is, is a cross section of the cube um, in half the first time, and then finding these lines that go to the center. And then the second time we cut it in half along this diagonal so that we can find um, spots on this edge and also this spot here, X, okay? So this view is the view of this cube. When I cut this cube in half, then I look this way and that's what I see, okay? Um, and with these two versions, one that was useful for the grid on two by two and one that was useful for the grid on four by four, we have all the information for eventually our cube to figure out the inside part of the cube. Okay. Um, so the important thing in this drawing is that we have these lines perfectly uh, perpendicular to this diagonal cut. Okay, so these lines up and that this dimension is four inches, which is the height of the cube. So in theory, then with this information and with the information from the drawing before, which is the face of the cube, let's say our design, in this case for the, uh, for the, for the one based on the four by four grid, I would be able to build all my parts um, by uh, grabbing these dimensions on the outside and combining them with various dimensions on the inside, depending on where, um, where the line that I need is. In other words, points on the outside are labeled with A, B, C, D, E, and X. And then these are the numbers. I mean, these are the letters on this drawing. So using the compass, you would then build um, these parts, which are a series of triangles. Um, these are just two triangles put together right here. Okay. Then um, we have to build that. And I'm now gonna go fast here because I, I should just do it. 
um, what we need to do is we need to build the shape, which is again, part of the shape. So this shape for, for this particular cube, yeah, that's the front, is the shape that we need in order to, um, to resolve the inside, okay? So it starts out here. Let's see if I can show it. Starts out here. That's the first triangle. Then it goes around. That's the second triangle, which is this one. Third and fourth. Third and fourth. Hope the lighting shows it. Then fifth is here, and sixth is here. And then we did this little adjustment um, later, where we combined these two triangles into one shape. Mm. And I'll show how to do this again in a moment. And then we just have to build a cube, okay? So for that, we use a version of that drawing. Uh, what happens really is that we build this drawing and then we put it in that layout. So with this drawing, we can then use a, a push pin or for example, the point of my compass, although I shouldn't ruin it, uh, and transfer these to make many times these pieces in order to build, again, in this case, this cube, right? So that's my shape. And I would need, uh, well, basically four squares cut like this um, would give me the entire outside of the cube, except the top and the bottom, which are square, okay? And for the rough cube, we're just gonna simply, um, use scotch tape to put it together, okay? And that's really the only required model. Uh, this happens to be a different design, but it's just scotch tape, all right? So that means we don't need to do tabs or anything. Um, this is the simpler version. So that's assignment 20 this year. And then for those of you who want to build a version like this, which is, let's just say perfect. I mean, nothing is perfect, but this would be perfect in the sense that you don't see the joints, um, the joints. And uh, in this particular model, I put tabs on this tape. I, I cut tabs out of this shape um, and I attach the, uh, uh, the triangles from the top. Okay, so this would be optional. It's not extra credit, but it's optional if you do it, you know, it's just for you really. Um, and that would be, yeah, the refined cube. Okay, um, again, the tabs we're gonna put on these pieces, not on this one. This is a change that we made. Um, then uh, for those really adventurous, you can actually take, for example, this shape, which is the simple shape, we made two parts, I don't have another second part, but um, but you know, it's only two parts because I left the top closed, right? So it would just fit one and two. But with these same pieces, I could actually devise, a, do a, a cube that actually has three separate pieces and there's a different arrangement of the parts. And if anybody wants you know, help to would do this, it's, it's kind of fun. I'm just gonna go through some of the some of the designs that past students have made. Um, every time these pieces are always the same, meaning um, they're exactly the same. When you look at them, this again is the two piece one. When you look at them, they have to match, okay? Um, so they're exactly half, each one of them, half of, of the cube, right? So you notice in this cube, one part is, let's say this male part fits into this female part. Um, you know, there's valleys here, there's mountains here. Um, but the main thing really is that they're exactly the same. So I would be able to put this inside that exactly, which is not what I can do with my hands. For example, I cannot do that. Um, so you could say they're right-handed or left-handed, but they're only one way, um, not both. Um, so the, yeah, the cool thing about this version would be that you actually take the same parts, you would use the same triangles 
you would rearrange them and you would also use this section. In other words, this section you would also put on this face. So in this cube, let's see which was the initial one, this particular section, you would also put it here. So that in the end, you end up sectioning six faces instead of four. And the result is that that's divisible by three and therefore you get three parts, which sounds weird for a cube, but it's possible. Um, so yeah, this is the example of how this particular section, this particular cube could be reconfigured into three parts instead of two. And if you use two colors, one for the inside and one for the outside, that's uh, more fun, of course. Um, if you don't have, you know, fancy paper, and it should be cardstock, right? I I have here some nice, I think it's called Murano paper, um, and it's fairly thin. It's actually thinner than like uh, pasta boxes and uh, cereal boxes. But if you have nothing else, you could do that. Like this is a package from some cake place, and um, and it's not bad. It's a little a little thicker thicker than I would like, but it's it's okay. Uh, and you would need, of course, a knife uh, to do this project. Well, not that you would need you 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 need it for sure. So and, and again, this is the knife that I recommended, which you should have. Not the exacto knife. That's not good. Okay, despite the fact that everybody else recommends exacto knives. Um, and for those of you that know, might not know the difference. Let me grab one. If I can find one, uh, put them away because they're kind of dangerous. Okay, well, everybody should know what an exacto knife looks like, but it, it looks it looks like this, right? Something like that. And that's the blade, and usually this little bit gets broken up, so it's kind of a pain. It's really kind of dangerous to replace the blade because you have to unscrew it, etc., etc., etc. So, do me a favor, get yourself one of these, okay? Um, it really is the best. You just snap one of the sections, which is pre-scored, that, very safe, um, and then you're good, good to go, okay? Uh, there's a lot of videos already on this project, it's just that they're not, like, edited, you know, to make, like, a, you know, a Netflix series or something like that, okay? So just bear with me, um, and um, what else? Let's see. Oh yeah, this is actually an old file that shows some tricks about how to, for example, if you have pieces that are dangling when you make the construction, you could move them around so that they're all together. Okay, so this particular design is transformed into this design so that the pieces are all together, or it could even be transformed, well, actually it's a different design. Um, you could put all these pieces around. Let's see. Now I have to see how, <laughs> I don't know if this might be right, I don't know. So this would be another way of reconfiguring it around the core in the middle. I don't know, I wonder if it's right. Oh, this would be gone, right. So, okay, so anyway, there is techniques to make this a little bit more um, easy to construct. Um, I think that's right. Okay, so that's the three-part cube for those of you who might be interested. And then the final one, so the, the, the refined cube, you know, the perfect one with the glue and everything, that's optional. The three-part cube is extra credit. Uh, for both of those though, if you do them, you must have done the rough one first. Otherwise I won't accept even the extra credit um, if you didn't do the simpler one first. Um, and then the last drawing will be a representation of your cube, okay, in two isometric views. So I believe this is this one, yeah. Okay, um, actually, yeah, like this. 
And unfortunately, with the isometric, you know, some faces do get hidden. So, for example, right now, um, we have perspective here. So why this? That's why this is a little bit smaller there than in the drawing. Um, so unfortunately, we don't get to see this. But it's a. Uh, and then the other view would be this one. So on the on the right, we put the so-called asymmetrical view in which the two parts of the cube look different. Um, not two parts, but the, the left side in this view looks different from the right side. Whereas in this view, it's symmetrical. Okay, left and right are the same. That's it, that's the project. So um, what I'm gonna do now, because I promised a few students who did the simpler check section, however, um, there were parts that um, turned out to be um, new in terms of the approach. I want to make sure that I cover those. So let's see, I have here the printout somewhere, uh, which I included in an email to the uh, students, um, where I put everybody's design, I took the names out. And so just to show you the variety, I guess. Um, so there's really not that many. I mean, all of these, whatever you see one where the, um, if it started in the middle here, um, then no parts are required. Let's see, how can I put this? Um, then your pieces are gonna be connected, right? Right there, right there, right there, that's it. And then it's gonna reconnect to exactly the same spot. So what that means is that, for example, for this design, when you make the inside of the cube, you just need to worry about these three pieces, okay? And this happens to go from C to B, to X, to um, D. Um, in some designs, because of the way it worked out, you need to worry also about lines that go here. Otherwise, you're gonna have a gap, right? So let me just show you which ones those are. There's really only two, I think. Um, but maybe before I do that, let me just um, go through this. So. To build these um, cubes, what I would do is I would, first of all, just cut times four, right? I would cut this guy, this is four inches, okay, by four inches, um, right? And for that, you can use your other drawing where you made the sequence, um, basically this drawing, right? Remember, if, if you recall, there was a big, um, the big design was shown on the left and then this other smaller thing was shown on the right. So you could take that drawing and again, using a push pin, transfer it onto another piece of cardboard and make these four times and then cut it. And if you're, if you're smart and, and sort of planning ahead, what you could do is make a little mark on the cut so that you match you know, this part with that part instead of mixing them up. Um, so you get a perfect fit. Um, and then we have to do the inside, which is now what, we'll, what, what I'm gonna do and show you. Um, so, but for the outside, what you need is, you know, your section, your face, four times, plus of course the top and the bottom, right? So one, two, three, four, and then five and six for the top and the bottom. Uh, and because we're using scotch tape, you can cut them all loose and then you just glue them back, you know, and attach them back together. Um, so here, what I did was I highlighted, um, you know, one of the parts, right? And it's, it's, it's well, let me see. Uh, once you do one, you basically do the other exactly the same. Uh, let me take one more piece of tracing paper if I can. Um, and I've already checked all the ones in this semester so that I've already told anyone that might have done the sequence slightly different um, whether it was correct or not. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that once you make, when you make your cube, 
Okay, these are the folds right here. That's one half and it's one half exactly because if you take it and you turn this guy, it's gonna be exactly the top part, right? So you're just repeating everything twice. Um, and for the inside, you're also repeating everything twice. The only difference will be that in your parts, right? This is basically the same part as this part, but this is a mountain and this is a valley. And so when you have that, your scores, uh, which are very light cuts you're gonna make on the paper have to be reversed, okay? This again is shown in many other videos. Um, so let's see, let's continue here and see if there are, yeah, so this is one of those cases. I'm gonna talk about it in detail. Uh, these are all uh, okay, these are all good. And when I have this diagram in here, I'm simply showing that by doing this section as shown, um, again, you would get loose parts. Just type out this. In other words, you would have dangling pieces, right? Uh, and it's a little harder to construct. So one way to get around that um, is to put all these parts, make them rotate and go around the base, right? So everything comes off the base and then everything you know, comes up like this, like a box. Um, so these are the cases where I, um, what I suggested doing that for the construction, um, the smaller versions. This I believe is the only other case where we'll need to do these special edge triangles. Um, other than that, all of these are super cool and they'll be really interesting to build. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just gonna go through this for the, for the record, for the, for the purposes of the video. Um, and it's interesting, it's really fascinating. Actually, sometimes when a section may be like, like this, which let's say it's like, oh, this is maybe less interesting than that section under that section. But actually you'd be surprised once you do the inside, it turns out it's not so plain as it might appear from the uh, outside. Um, see um, yeah that's another one of the same of this particular uh, case here so I'll, I'll actually highlight that here too so as a reminder that I know that's that's going from E to E A, 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 E. Um, so maybe I should I should make sure that show a larger version. Um, oh yeah, there it is. So you, um, I've made this available in here. It shows really well um, the the um, the lettering system. Okay. So you should always refer back to this in terms of like what points you have on your particular design, all right? Uh, and when you draw it on this um, page, which is a template that I provided, okay, to bake the, well, the cube inside and outside really. I mean, the outside is simple. The inside is gonna be a little trickier. This is an example of how you build it. Um, And I mean, I myself now know these, numbers, these letters by heart because I've been doing it so many times. But um, so let's just finish with this. Yeah. So what I had said earlier about being able in theory to do, um, if you based your design on the two by two grid, right? And you just used 
only these lines, okay? Only the lines that you already see. In theory, you could do it with other compass, uh, the inside, and I'll show you how. Um, but that means, for example, if you put a line here, that's already not possible with, with other compass because that's um, these two sections right here, okay? Already include all the possible triangles. Um, to build a section that's designed based on just these lines, okay? Um, so, let's see, um, let's try to do that. Let's try to do that with my original one, which was this one. And I'll show, I'll do this both with the grid, with the circular grid and with the uh, pieces without a compass. Um, So let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. Lots of parts. Um, Okay. So, okay, so this is already, well, actually it's not solved. This is just the outside of my, um, my design that was based on this section, right? So this was A, C, and E, okay? Now you can just draw this, right? With your ruler and cut four of that, right? Or four, yeah. Um, so these are, these are two, so I've already put it together here. So in other words, you would take, you can see it, but you would take, um, that part right and then you use the other part as well and after a while you have you know two cubes so the outside is fairly simple right uh, remembering that you have to put um you can't just repeat this shape four times right otherwise it wouldn't the sequence wouldn't be right um, but the question is how do you make this inside right so Let's see if I can show it. So if, if you look at this cube, each one of these pieces, okay, is part of a larger piece that cuts the cube in a certain way. So for example, you look at this, you'll see that these triangles, I mean, they happen to form a square, but are found in this cut cube, right? So in other words, in my cube, I already have these pieces. And in this case, it happens to be this triangle, right? Right here, right? So if I wanted to, we have to remember that we're always going to the center, right? Imagine there is like a little guy in the center with a laser. And once we know what the outside line is, you know, it's pointing a laser at that line and cutting off or rather cutting in half the cube, okay? So we built this in little triangles one after the other um because we have lines on the outside segments and when you go to the center you end up having a triangle most of the time later maybe two triangles form a square together like this because they're part of the same plane so that's now a simpler right because it happens to be parallel so it happens to be a square but this one is a little harder right this piece this piece right here so how would I know how big that is? If you notice, it's actually, it's this segment from A to E and it's going to the center. And if I go back to my section of the cube cut this way, I see that E is right here. It's my very corner of the cube, okay? And so, 
if you can isolate it, let's see if I can show this. Yeah, right there. So right now I look, I have to solve this piece, but if you notice, it's already solved for me because, because what it is, it's this triangle right here. Let's see if I can show it. It's going from there to here, right? So this triangle is this triangle already, right? If you can imagine that I have another section here cutting. Sorry, everything is going to go out of focus, but um, I took the auto. I mean, yeah, I took the auto focus off because I hate it when it jumps back and forth. Um, so uh, for these particular sections, again, based on I forget where my sketches. on lines that are just using these lines, we find everything either in this section or in this section. Um, because any of these, okay, it's gonna be this guy right here. So, so as it turns out, for these particular designs, you only have two triangles really that you need to build everything else, meaning uh, the one I just figured out here, right? It's nothing but this one over here. Let's see if I have tracing paper. Yeah, nice. Okay. So in other words, once I figured, sorry, once I figured this triangle, This other triangle, oops, sorry. This triangle over here is really the same as this. It's just flipped, flipped again. Okay. Um, and on this guy, it's the same thing. So once I figured out, basically there is one triangle which then gets repeated, flipped over to here, right? This happens to be also perfectly symmetrical. This is a little bit different, but, um, but that's the idea. So um, what I would do, or what you could do with your drawing is if you made that, that drawing, remember where you had the section, right? Essentially, these are your two key triangles, right? And so out of these, you can build anything because let's see, that's uh, C, A, this is A, this is Z, this is E, and this is Z. So when you have your, your drawing, which now I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna dig out, but I'm just, I had to cut some pieces here. Um, so if you, from that drawing, right, you could cut yourself some parts. So I happen to have now a nice rectangle that mimics that, and also a nice square that mimics that, okay? Um, which is again, this section, rather like that, okay? So now, in theory, I can take one triangle, which is this, right? And then I can take a bigger one. Let's see if I find one. Hope I do. Uh oh, uh oh, yeah. I do, but I have to disconnect it because um, I taped it. Okay, so here I have these guys. So now with these two pieces, again, in theory, without a compass, because I've drawn this before, um, I can try to build my section. Let's see how that works. Um, I should take a piece of um, thicker paper. So for that, I'm actually gonna use the Bristol board. Um, Yeah. 
So that's that's my design. So what I need to find is um, I'm actually going to tape this now. Just a second, um, so that I have my cube kind of you know ready to go and ready to take the parts right. because now we can test different methods of finding the inside part. Um, okay, so let me mark again the letters here. Um, so again, this was a C, that's an A, and that's an E, okay? So my job here now is to find triangles that connect these lines to the center of the cube and this line to the center of the cube. So CA, I would look, and basically it's again one of this, right? And then AE is one of this, right? So if I had them, yeah, right here. And right here, I can test it, right? I mean, I could simply take um, scotch tape and see, and I could do trial and error. So oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that looks better, right? That looks like that would work, okay? So this looks like it would fit. So let's just try that. Let me, I'm gonna leave that here. My shape then would be um, yeah, let's call this A, C, and Z. And this one, I'm following this sketch right there, right? So A, C, and E. Okay. So now we just follow my design. And let me show you, I could do the whole thing, right? So this is E. This is again A, C, and E, E, A, and C. So I start out with that, right? So I could try it. And now this maybe might not fit in the paper here because, because there's not enough paper to do an entire run. Um, Here's how you can do it. You can say, okay, my edge, I should probably write it on both sides because um, they flip, right? So it's a good idea to write it on both sides. Um, Z and E. So I start with the first one, C to A. Um, So C to A right here, right? And then it goes to Z. So I could say, oh, okay, let me just trace this guy. And by the way, I'm using a really thick pencil, but you should not, um, you should use um, a thinner pencil. So this is a little bit homemade, let's say, because um, now I have to continue. Now the next one is gonna be A to E on the outside going to Z. So A to E. Is this one on the outside going to Z? Let's see how that works. Yeah, A to E. So the next one would be here. Right, you see how I'm matching the letters, right? In other words, sorry, I'm out of, out of the frame here. So what I just did now, if, I look, if you look at my cube, I'm going from C to A to E. So on the outside, my triangles go from C to A to E. On the inside, they always go to Z, right? So I could say, okay, that's that's good. Now let's continue because I'm gonna need more, right? So I, I go to the next phase. The next phase is E to A. So that means that actually what I need to do is, I need to flip, oh, I haven't drawn this yet, sorry. Let me draw this. 
Now you'll see that using a compass is faster than this method. But again, if you're like on a desert island, and you don't have a compass, but still have a straight edge. Um, so let me also start marking them on the drawing. So now again, I have to go to the next one. So E to A would be this one. So you notice that if I flip this now, I'm going E to A. So this is the next one. So Z always stays the center, right? Okay, now what's the next one? That's A to Z. And this is the outside, right? Okay, so this is A. So now let me see. The next one is going to be AC, which would be this one right here. Right? Okay. So I've now just finished half of my cube. Basically, I've, I've now done this part, I've done this half. Now I would have to do the other half and it's just the same, right? But as you can see, because I've already crossed the 12 o'clock, six o'clock line, uh, I'm not gonna have enough room to do, basically finish it off. I would have to do it into more parts, right? Um, so let's see if that works. Let's just construct it. If I have two of these guys, because okay. the, there's nothing like actually testing it, right? I mean, and I'm, I'm rushing now a little bit. You can see I'm not being too precise, but um, uh, still the video is going to be long, sorry. <laughs> um, it's just the way it is. I, it's not, um, yeah. It's what it is. Okay, so, but let's test it to see if it works. Okay, so now just because I'm gonna still mark everything. Okay, so now that's my shape, which I would repeat. One, two times, and then two more times for the other half, okay? So let's see if that really works. Well, we kind of know that it does. Um, Okay. Well, and you can see this triangle because the next one is gonna be flat next to it, you know, you can then eventually make it into just one large square. Um, okay, so that's the method. The other method, and this applies to everybody um, to obtain the shape is to actually um, use the triangle, uh, use the compass, okay? And so online, you can download this, um, these templates, right? Which has space for, uh, by the way, they might print slightly off on your printer. Just make sure they're the same, these two, so that you don't, you always work from this side. So if it's a little bit off here, it's gonna be a little bit off there. It's okay if it's not four by four, perfect. But uh, as long as you don't mix it with something else, like, something you built by hand. Um, so you would design, you put your design here and then you would construct it here, okay? Because you have to imagine, so what these lines are, you have to imagine that your cube is like inside the sphere and each point uh, or many spheres actually, one inside the other. And these spheres uh, touch on these points. Uh, you can also think them as circles, okay? But because they go in all directions, what we can do eventually is flatten them all out onto one single plane, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly do this particular design um, because it is in fact faster, essentially. So my design here is basically already, I don't touch the corners because it gets messy, so leave the corners, the crossings alone. I know that's my design. So because I already have that line, I'm not even gonna touch that line. I'm just gonna draw this line here. Okay. 
okay? And I'm gonna label it. I'm gonna label it C, again, based on these letters here. I'm gonna label it C, A, and E, okay? So all these circles, by the way, are nothing but the, pro the continuation let me see if I find the, blah, 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 the, yeah, the distances, okay. Let's see if I can, if I can show it. And I, I did a diagram in iLearn so that you can see it. So if you recall, this is how we find how any of the spots on the faces of the cube uh, how big they are to the center. That's how we find it. And when we find it, these are all basically um, radiuses, okay, yeah, of circles. Um, if you were to, this is up now, but if you were to actually draw circles coming off these radiuses, you will end up doing something like this, right? Okay. And so what we have done, instead of having to do this piecemeal later, uh, we have already pre-drawn all these circles. Um, meaning that, in order to build these triangles, you need one side on the outside, one edge on the outside and two edges inside. And the, and the edges inside, are found either here, right? Either here or here, okay? So you need one line from the outside and two lines from somewhere here. Um, once you have that information, you can just build it technically without the need of these grids. So let me show you how to do it both ways. If I didn't have this grid, except that grid makes it faster. Uh, Let me just flip, flip this, okay. So the way these would work, because let's imagine that you've drawn this yourself, right? Without downloading this template. Um, um, what you do is you say, okay, this is my section, right? It's matching my drawing. Now I have to find these inside parts from C to A to the center Z, and then from A to E to the center Z. So to do it with the compass, you would, you would start out with a simple line that would um, replicate C to A. And to do that, you can either measure it or you can use the compass. I like using the compass because, although remember this is, yeah, this particular design, you don't need the compass. But so let me just start by doing a mark there. Okay, so this is C and A. Now to go to Z, in other words, um, you would use that other drawing, which again, I put it already away, but I'll, I'll grab it again. And this was the simpler one. Okay, so now this is the outside. Now I need to get C to Z and A to Z in the middle. So I go here and I say, okay, that's the length, C to Z. That's my first line. So let me just take it. Okay, C to Z. So I point on C and I draw an arc. Okay, and that's Z somewhere. Now I take the next one, which is A. So I look at my design again, and it's here, and it's A to Z. Okay, I point in A, and where they cross, that's my actual Z point. Um, and then I just keep going into, into the next triangle. Okay, so the next triangle would be 
A to E, right? I just did C to A, C to A. Now A to E is next to it. So the first thing I would do is draw this line with the compass, meaning I would measure it. And I take it from my drawing, right? Take it from my drawing here. And I go to A, oops. And I make my next line. So I don't know where that now is going to end up, but um, that's now E somewhere. Right? Now I go back to my drawing and I look, okay, how long is E to Z? It's this one. Okay, which corresponds to this line on my, right? That's this line right here, okay? And corresponds to that if I turn it like this. So I grab it from there and I, now I point in Z though, and I get that spot. And because of the geometry, I believe these lines continues um, straight yeah that's it so now i would continue to do this and i would just keep going right so what i did now i used the compass kind of like from scratch um, the various circles here would be like this well actually let me continue them so so that you see what's happening so basically the template you'll find in iLearn is essentially this drawing that we just did from scratch, but with a little bit less scratching, so to speak. Okay, meaning with some more information given already for you that will save you some steps. Okay, so right now I just did three of the circles because I just happened to need only three circles. Um, for my particular design. In other words, I need only the E circle, the C circle, and the A circle, okay? And so that's it. So what this template is, is just the pre-printed version of these particular uh, distances to the center. Now, the outside, you still have to do that. So let's now do it, do this now on the circle here. How would you do it? So we start out at C. So I make a mark somewhere here, picking up C, and I can go either left or right, it doesn't matter. Um, and I repeat the process. So the first thing I need to do is bring this outside dimensions. So that is going to be C. I mean, it's C anywhere, right? Um, so let me measure it. C to A. Okay. And by the way, this, this particular thing here is just an example, right? This design is just the example of my section here. Um, so then I draw a circle and I really don't need to draw the full circle. I just draw some. And when it hits A, which is here, and I just like to make a circle around it. That way I don't touch the crossing, okay? That's, a, that's my first one. So now I can already connect because I don't need to do the Z part. The Z part is already drawn, right? Um, there was a student named Slate Werner who came up with this great uh, idea to just you know pre-draw all the circles. Um, and okay. So that's my first triangle. And now I just keep going. Now the, the next one is A to E, right? So then my cube is A to E, we need to draw that one. Um, so A to E, I pick it up again here. Okay. And I draw another circle and now I have to find where it hits E. So E is the, the most, the outermost one. So it's right here. 
now something happened. Wait. Um, oh, yeah, this is a, it's one of those things. It's actually an optical illusion. <laughs> um, because I'm like, whoa, that doesn't look like it's the continuation, but actually it is. It's one of these funny, funny things. Um, yeah. You see it? So that's E. And because of the circles, it looks like it's bending, right? It looks like it's, it's curving. And it's, again, just an optical illusion. And believe me, this is a straight line in this particular design. Okay, not in all, just in this particular design. Um, so now I just continue and I go, you know, I go in reverse. Now I have to repeat the process. Because it's symmetrical, left to right, it's exactly the same. This part is the same as that. What I can do is now I don't even need to look at my model anymore because I can just simply take the compass and reverse the process. I can take now back from E to A and where it hits A right here is my other spot. And then, well, let's draw it so that we don't get confused. Um, now, okay, now I repeat, I repeat this guy. So this guy I could do it different ways, but the easiest is really just to, to just go, you know, retrace your steps essentially. Uh, just pick it up there, then jump over here. And that's gonna be a C somewhere. So C is this one, there. And that's my shape. So you can see that, well, for one, I think it's gonna be more precise if you use a compass, even though in theory, you don't need one. Um, oh, but let me talk about something else. So this particular design happens to have these two triangles next to each other. So you could put them together. So that means that you could, you could move, okay? You can move one triangle over and be, and have a design that's more efficient like this. Okay, so what I did is I just took this and I just turned it to come over here, okay? Um, because then I don't need to have a join here, right? I don't need to have a, a broken line here. See how I made this out of a square? Um, so this could be now your masterpiece, your master part, okay? <laughs> Uh, maybe it's also your masterpiece, but um, now if you need to make many of them, you don't want to draw them all the time, right? New. So what you can do is take this, uh, grab a push pin. If I find a push pin. Let's see if I'm more lucky than I was with my. Uh, actually, I need to go to the other room, but I believe you can still hear me uh, because I have a wireless mic. So I grab a push pin and bring it over. The push pins should be nice and sharp. Um, and I am back. Um, so what I'll do it now is I, so this is my original, my master master. What I'm gonna do because this is flimsy and it's gonna get worn out, I'm gonna transfer it onto a better piece, which should be a piece of Bristol board, for example. This one, except I have no room since I've already used it. Um, Maybe I'll use a piece of colored board, um, you know, cardstock, not too dark, otherwise you can't see it. Um, okay, I found it. No, bad luck. <laughs> I need to find a better piece. Uh, and that's why you have film crews making these kind of videos because you know they give you the stuff. Okay, this is this is a little funny paper, but it'll be good for this for this for this purpose. Um, so, what is my design? Lost it. Okay, here it is. Um, 
So this is my design. This is, let, let's just call this master one. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is transfer this onto another one. And, um, oh yeah, but before I do that, I want to optimize it, right? I want to make this triangle. Um, yeah, into a square. So a right here. Okay, so this process will allow you to make, let's see, it's here, is that a square? Yeah, hope it's a square. Um, ideally, if you could do this before you make your other part, anyway, it doesn't look like a square because again, these curves like throw off your perception, uh, but I think it's pretty square. Yeah, look at that. It's funny how we get tricked. But um, so now I would erase this line, right? Now that's my master shape. So this is A. Um, so now what I do is I transfer this onto um, with the push pin. I transfer it onto another board. Okay, a thick board because, well, you know, cardstock past the box. because that way it doesn't get worn out as I make all my pieces, okay? All right. So again, now I'm going to circle them, otherwise I lose them. And I also copy the letters because um, otherwise I might get confused. Um, so once I redraw this part, um, that becomes now my new master, right? And I'm gonna use this now to make my parts from, you know, basically we, uh, oh, actually I'm supposed to get rid of this because I moved it over, right? Yeah. That's it, that's, that's the correct final optimized shape. Um, so that doesn't exist. And that's it. So this, is, this will be now my, I call it my cookie cutter um, to make more parts from, right? So let's call it master two. Um, now I would take the nice paper if I wanted to make it out of nice paper. Uh, if you don't have nice paper, you know, like colored like this, which again, this one is called Canson Murano, I think. Um, you can um, you can use your white Bristol board, okay? So now we just repeat the process and, you know, without trying to waste, trying not to waste too much. So for example, I would get four out of this sheet, okay? Um, okay, I just wanna do one more thing before ending this video, and that is look at those situations where the design requires um, to have triangles also for the edge of the cube. So now I have to find the uh, set. Um, yeah, so again, I believe there's only Two cases, one is this design and maybe, well, there's more than one person because it was similar designs. One is this. So uh, here we need, yeah, EE. -E. We need the extra EE -E because um, because the way the section goes, otherwise everything is gonna be loose. So we need that extra part. So in other words, even though the initial design was like this because it didn't end up on the side, it then requires to have that extra part. So the two lines here are not sufficient. The two triangles from these two pieces are not sufficient to build your cube if that's your design, okay? So I believe there's a couple of people who have this design. Um, 
and then I believe there are a couple of people who have this design, okay? So in both cases, we need this extra large triangle, which it fills the entire side of the cube, the entire edge of this face, okay? And if we go back to our shape and our section, right, our section cube, you will see that that is this, okay? So this is E and E, and therefore, that extra part, again, if, you're, if your design is either one of these type, right, there's, I know there's another design where the design is on the top like that. Um, if it's one of these, you know, you need that extra piece here, or if it's this design, okay, you'll need this extra piece. That extra piece going from E to E and skipping C, right, is actually this large triangle right here. Okay, so that keep that in mind. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to. Um, I don't have time to do both this and the other one, um, and this one, except to say that this would be from E to A to E and then to E. Whereas here we have. Um, let's see. I can actually pick it up uh, here, I think. Yeah, I can actually pick this. So, yeah, I'm here too. So, this one is actually different here. Um, let me let me do this nicer in a, in, a, in another spot. Um, so yeah, this is one design, and you need this extra line as well. Um, and you know, if your design is the opposite, it's, it's the same thing, right? Like this at the bottom yeah if your design is at the bottom it doesn't matter because it's it's the same line here that you're going to need to add and i'm adding it at the very beginning now uh, because just the way the the sequence works okay okay so this would be your pattern um okay so what I'll do now is I'll simply draw uh, either that or this other one, which we said it's like this. And this also has the extra, uh, the extra bit at the bottom. Okay, that's another, I believe, let's see. Yeah. So this design, um, it's going to need all these parts. Okay. So once again, I think it's faster if you use the compass. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll, for these particular cases, again, just for the benefit of those students um, who might have this design, I, um, yeah, I'll just construct this set. I don't have now the outside, so I can't show you that, but, um, um, but you will see that if you use the compass, because you're going again from E to E and skipping C, well, you don't need to worry, right? You just you just build that. So let me do this now directly on one of these. Um, e, E, A, E, so E, E, A, and then C, okay. I could try to do them both, okay. Let's see if I have, we can do this quickly. Um, This I need one of these. One, 
So I'm kind of, you know, in a way solving it for those, but I won't do the whole thing. So, you know, you'll need to still construct it yourselves. All right, so let's do the first one. And um, yeah, so E to E you've said, Okay, e to e. So let's let's try to do this. This is the same, right? It's just reversed. Um, so it will go from here to here to a, and then back to e, right? Um, and now, just because it's so it's more clear, I will I will. Uh, I will draw it and darken it even in the lines where normally I wouldn't do it because again, it, be, it becomes a little muddy, a little, a little messed up. Um, but again, doing big circles around it doesn't hurt them because you're not touching the actual thing, right? So, um, so if your design is like that, you would do, um, You would do as follow, right? You would take the first one, you would start on E, of course. So we're going like this, right? We start here, and we're going there. So I'll say any point there. I, I take E, measure it, bring it over. And I because I'm going to E, it's going to be there, right? And that's my first triangle. So I'm just going to quickly draw it. And I'm actually curious now if I have enough to do even, because these are big distances and big triangles. Um, so let's see. And it's interesting that actually you see how it's almost touching C, right? That's the point that we skipped. Um, Something happened here. My image, I don't know why that's smaller. So let's see if I can make it bigger. It was weird. Um, okay. So that's my first one. So now I'm going to go from E to A. Okay. So from E to A, so draw a circle where it intersects A, circle A, which is actually the furthermost inside, which is this one. That's my next line. Then I do the next one. I think it's another um, back to back to AE, right? So it's the same. It's the same length. So from A to E, from A back to E. Right. And now that line probably is a straight line too. Sometimes I'm suspicious of this line that continues straight because it's like, is that a coincidence or is that supposed to be like that? Um, and wow, this is actually pretty cool because it looks like, um, because I didn't cross the 12 o'clock, six o'clock line, looks like I would be able to do yet another part, okay? Um, so anyway, that's that's for this design. I'm gonna quickly do this design now. Um, and again, I don't have the outside, so I cannot like show how that would get built. But, um, but this design once again is referring to this. So now I'm gonna do the final one and end this very long video, which hopefully 
hopefully we'll cover all the missing parts from the other videos, okay? So now I'm gonna do this guy right here, okay? Um, and just to quickly show why this was unusual, um, why these were unusual, both of these um, was that basically by flipping now this design over here, we ended up, oh, what's, what's going on there, right? This is now my design. Um, yeah, and I find triangles for these lines, but I still need to find that line, you know, a triangle for that part, okay? So that was the unusual thing there. And in this one, the unusual thing was that, um, to see if I can do this properly. No, I just made a mistake. It's hard to think backwards. <laughs> um, so this is the initial design. And um, yeah, and this is how it would look, right? So these are, these are my squares. But the problem here is like, um, did I do that right? Let me check. Let me quickly, quickly check because now I'm, um, yeah, no, I didn't do it right. Um, that's the design right there. It's actually. As I said, it's not easy to draw backwards. Um, so this design actually looks like this. Right? So once again, you know, I have to have these parts, this part, and also here, it doesn't reconnect to this one. So there was this extra part that I needed, um, but instead, I'm going to, um, why something is happening to my video here. I hope this doesn't get messed up. Um, so anyway, um, let me quickly do it and then we'll, we'll finish off, okay? So we need to draw it fresh. We need to draw these lines. Um, so it would be here. And then here, and again, I'm just doing this for the purposes of the video, but you really shouldn't draw lines that are already there, right? Um, the best thing is just to draw circles around them. Okay, so that's from E to E to A to C to E. Um, all right, so I put this on the side and I build it. And I'm really curious now if I have enough, enough material um, before I actually have to break it up, right? So E to E, again, just pick any spot um, on the right circle, of course, in this case, E. Sorry, I have to measure it first. Um, okay, that's my first E. So now I connect the parts. Now, of course, when I do this, like, especially not when I'm doing it fast, I could make a mistake, right? So it's, it's the, the proof that is correct will come when you actually put it together on your cube and you look at your cube and you see that it stays perfectly uh, square and it doesn't do funny stuff like well all of a sudden these points are like going in okay um so obviously you have to you have to you have to test it i mean, I mean that's why we're doing it right um to see if it's really correct so um don't get upset if you make a mistake because 
It's very possible. Um, the nice thing is that we can fix it. Okay. So now again, I'm going, I'm moving in this direction, right? This is my path. So over here, my path is going to go this way, right? Um, so the next one is going to be E to A. So I take that. Test it to see if it works. And then I point in E and where it intersects A, which is here. That's my line. So this happens to be, I think, exactly the same as the one we did before. Um, but then it will change because now I believe it's going to see maybe. Yeah. Okay, so now the next one is A to C. So point in A. Grab that measurement, go to A over here. And it's going to go to C, whatever C is. So let's find it. Uh, C is the third to last. There we go. Uh, looks good because I know from the design of this particular cube that this line is a continuation. It's straight. Um, now I have one more and then I'm done. So now I have C to E. Happens to be the same length here. And E I know is the outermost. Right there. And okay, so that's the shape for this particular design. Um, I don't, you know, don't feel bad if I didn't do your exact, your particular design because I just knew that this was something that was not included in the videos before, in the previous videos. So I had to, I had to show it. Otherwise, you know, those people might get, you know, even more confused than normal than than other people already are. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's that's how you find the inside. You know, you know, make the template from this. Another master with the push pin, and then from those make yet another parts, and then build your you can build your outside from this piece, and then you can build your inside from this piece, okay? So thank you for listening and for being patient. And um, I hope this video comes out. <laughs> so we'll see you um, next time. Bye-bye.